Welcome back. My name is Alpha Mike One. Today I'm going to show you a fully automatic gold farm that is slightly more efficient and a lot more fun. The first thing you're going to notice is this blue water curtain in front of the portal that allows us to see right through the purple swirly dirly so we're not missing any of the action. And secondly, the heart of this gold farm is you've got five giant portals that are stacked right up next to each other. Most gold farms, they have to have a space in between them to work efficiently. And now for the fun part. Apparently snow golems hate zombie pigment. I don't know what the history of this feud is. We could help patch things up, but instead I say we use this to our advantage. As soon as the pigmen spawn in, the snow golems open fire. When the snowmen win the fight, the pigmen get pushed out of the portal and into this water channel. And if the pigmen manage to power through the barrage, they're going to find that the snowmen are just out of reach and they're going to land up in this water channel. So now that all the pigmen are in one of the two water channels, the snow golems can rest easy because we have complete control. Both water channels lead to the same point, and that point is the beginning of the mob elevator. The mob elevator is going to take them up 25 blocks and then push them over a cliff. Where they gladly give up their loot. And the last issue we'll have to address is anytime you have a mob elevator, baby zombies will clog it up. So I've got a double barrel baby zombie cleanout system. Yep, that's the name I'm going with. So that's an overview of how everything works. I'll go over the details as we build. We'll start by building the portals. And the first thing you need to know is the number of zombie pigmen that spawn in will be decided by the number of purple swirly dirly blocks. So you want to get as many purple swirly dirly blocks, that's hard to say, in as small a space as you can. So I'm going to start by making the largest portal I can make. And that right now for console is 21 by 21. That is the inner dimensions. So I'm going to put down 21 blocks across. And I'm going to fill in the corners with just any regular block because I don't want to waste any obsidian. And then we'll go 21 blocks high. If we try to go one more, the portal won't work. Any less and we're losing out on some efficiency. So that's our first portal done and dusted. I stole that from Mumbo, by the way. Thanks, Mumbo. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack five portals deep. And the reason I decided on five is that's basically the most effective range for the snow golems. And I know you're going to ask me, hey, I only have so many diamond picks to get so much obsidian. It's going to take forever. Well, here's your solution. You make a dirt form and you pour lava in there. They've got to be solid lava blocks. They can't be flowing. And then you pour water over them and you've got instant obsidian. That's an easier way to do it. The way I did it in my build, in my actual world, was this bottom floor and most of the side walls I built with lava and water. And then with the roof, just to make life easier on myself, I used the obsidian that I had farmed. And here's an example of the sidewall. Rinse and repeat. The thing I like about this farm over most of your gold farms is that we can stack these portals right up next to each other. Most of them depend on the zombie pigment to walk off the portal, so they need to leave a space in between the portals. But in our case, the snow golems are going to push them off. So because of that, we're allowed to stack five 21 by 21 portals right up next to each other. And it's a little more efficient that way. 
The next step is to make our water channels that are going to catch and move the zombie pigment along. And I want to make them three deep. Three meaning three blocks below the portal. I need them to be that low because when I make my water mover, that is, there's going to be a water block at the second block. And if I only made this too deep, they'd be able to swim right back up onto the portal. That's not a thing I want. So we just make a single three deep channel down the length of both sides of the portals. And then we'll just fill it in. And now we need to place trap doors along the edge of the portal and then open the trap doors. And then the pigment are going to read that as a full block. They're going to think they can walk over that and then they'll fall into the trap that way. And then we'll just finish filling in these blocks. And then what I did in my farm, and this is entirely optional, but I put light sources at the base of these channels just so I could see better what was going on down there. And like I say, that is entirely optional. And then on the front side of this portal, I'm going to put down glass blocks. I chose blue stained glass blocks because they just look better with the water curtain that I'm going to put in front of that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our snow golem boxes. And the snow golem box is one block, one full block above the portal and we'll create a stage where they'll stand. And then in front of them, we're gonna place a half block that's gonna close them in. And then two blocks above that, we're gonna put another full block to help hold them in. And then what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a tall enough wall where the zombie pigment and the baby pigment can't run across and get to them. So I never have to worry about that. And also it's going to give them maximum visibility for shooting at the pigment. So this row right here is where the snowmen are actually going to stand. And then the front row, I'll put my half slabs. Then let's test this real quick. You'll see if the pigment go to jump to get at the golems, they won't be able to get at them. Then we'll fill in the sides to make sure there's no escape. So now we're just gonna close in this box for my snowman and it's gonna be three high. It's only gonna be one wide. If you are above ground, make sure you put a roof on it. If it rains, it will kill the snowman. Then the third block up, I'll put a solid block and that block and the half block are what's going to hold the snowman in. And that's going to give them maximum visibility from their point of view. Then I want to put a light source in the floor of this snowman's box. That'll make them more visible from my standpoint. And also it'll make it so that uh, we won't get any creepers or anything spawning in here. And then I want to make dividers for each of the snowmen. I want each of them to have their own little cubby, their own little section of the portal to cover. I find that's a little more efficient. And you can make each of those cubbies whatever size you want. It's an odd number, so some of the cubbies are going to be three wide, some are going to be four wide. Now we just need to put our snow golems in each of these cubbies that'll be two snow blocks topped by a pumpkin 
Make sure we cover them back up. And then that'll lead us to the more technical side of this build. We need to make put our water in our water channels. And we need to connect the two water channels. And then we need to add the elevator and the drop. So I'm going to make the two channels meet up. They're going to be just outside of this portal. So I'm going to go one block outside of this portal and that's going to be the floor of this side of the channel. So we'll just fill that wall in directly under that outer wall of the portal. And then this will be the floor that's going to connect the two channels. For now, I'm going to close this in. We're going to come back to that when we build the baby clean out. Notice that right here on this edge, I only want a two block opening. There's one and two. The rest of those blocks I want to fill in above me. That's going to make uh, transport a lot smoother. So as you can see, I'm going to fill in all those blocks and I'm just going to knock out those two blocks. Then I can go ahead and just close in this channel or this side of the channel, I should say. So let's add the water to the channel. I've explained this in more detail in a previous video, the XP slime farm. But basically we're gonna go to the far end of this channel and put our first water source. And at the first air block, we'll put a sign. And then we'll go one up and one behind to put another sign and that's gonna hold our second water block. It's gonna continue this stream. And that goes back to why I made this three deep rather than two deep. Because if it were two deep, the pigment would be able to swim right on top of that. And that water source is going to make it around the corner. So now we need to do the same thing on this side. So we'll start with our first water source. And at the air block, we'll put a sign and then we'll go back and up one and add another sign. So that'll create a space for us to put this next water block that'll pick up the mobs and carry them from that last air block and move them another eight blocks. So here, I don't want these streams to meet like this. I want the streams to end right there on that corner. So I'll put that sign there to end that stream. And also that's gonna be the first air block of my elevator. An elevator is gonna be an air block, then a water block, then an air block, and then a water block, and so on. That's gonna start with the air block. So I want to back that stream up a little bit so there's enough room for this stream to meet up with that first air block of the elevator. So now that I've got them here, I need my first water block of the elevator. But since these two streams meet, I need a way to hold that first water block in. So we'll put a roof on that. I want to keep that just too high so that they it cuts down on the bobbing. So my elevator is going to go right on this corner. So I'm going to go ahead and take this elevator up 25 blocks. I'm not really counting. I'm just taking it up above the portal. And I'll count later when I make my drop. Okay. 
in your build you're going to want to decide where you want them to end up so you're going to have to do a little math here and figure out where you need to take them up so you know where they're going to end up so now I need to make this second block right here a water block so I need a way to hold that in and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put a sign on this side and I need to go on the other side I'm going to have the same problem so I need to put a sign right there and those two signs are going to hold that water block in when I make a mob elevator in survival the way I do it is I make the shaft too wide temporarily and just place our block right there because it's really hard to place these signs in these water buckets while you're bobbing and you're going to lose track. So what I do is I do it too wide temporarily and then as I go I stand in that second shaft while I place these signs and water buckets and then I just fill that second shaft in as I go. And it makes it a lot easier. And then when I need to refill my buckets I'd go down this water elevator and I'd have a water source at the base of this water elevator and I'd refill my buckets and then swim back up and then continue that way. So we're just alternating between signs and water buckets or water blocks I should say. And all that's doing is creating an air pocket so the mobs don't drown as they swim up. When we get to the top of the elevator, that last water block is going to be the water source block that's going to push the zombies off the cliff. So I'm going to want to go eight out from that, starting at one, and then that second block will be two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we'll make a trough to surround that. and we'll make this a too high box for these guys to fit in. So there's my water source block and as you see it automatically ends on the eighth block and that's going to push them right over the edge. So then I'll go too high and put a roof on it. And that'll be the end of the elevator and that'll be our drop. So now we just need to make a tube for them to drop in. And now's the time that I'm going to count it off. I'm going to make sure this is a 25 drop, starting at 1. We'll count that as our first block, 2, and then we'll go up to 20, down to 25. Then once we've established where the floor is going to be, just fill in the tube for the drop. And then on the drop floor, I'm going to make a small opening and I'm going to replace this last block with a half slab at the bottom so that the top of the block below that will be able to place a hopper that will lead to a chest so I can collect all their loot. And then this isn't really necessary, but I'm going to put a glass block just to make sure they can't get out of there. They won't. So thus far we've made our portals, we've made our water channels that meet up at an elevator, we've made our drop, we've placed our snowman. The last step is to make our baby zombie clean out. Baby zombies are a real problem for mob elevators. They're only one block high, so they're either going to get caught in that first air block, or they're going to jump up and they're going to get caught up in that first water block. Either way, they're going to block the smooth flow of uh, zombies up that elevator. So that's an issue we need to deal with. The simple fix is just to knock that block out underneath, and then those guys will fall to their death. 
and the full-grown zombies are tall enough to where they catch that first water block. But in my world, I didn't have room to have a drop right there, so what I did was I cleared them out and killed them and caught their loot. So once that baby pigment drops down there, I need to wash him away. Now in this case, I'm going to make it come out six blocks. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then let me seal this in. So you can see what happens here. Put a water source down there that will carry the baby pigman to his imminent doom. This should carry him on to these two half slabs. And what I want to do is I want to drown him. So, to do that, put a sign there and then a water block there and what that's going to do is I made it two so that it's moving so it's going to push the baby zombie onto this block but there's no air there it's still a solid enough water block that it will drown him but it's going to force him to stay there rather than allowing him to hop back and forth he's going to be forced into this block and he won't have room to swim up because I'm going to seal him in. Unfortunate timing there. I just missed those guys. Now the only problem comes when I really need you to not be here. There we go. Get in there, buddy. So there's an example of them getting pushed to that last block and then pretty soon their air is going to run out. And then you see them drowning. So that's how that works. And then you see he leaves a little bit of loot, even the babies leave some loot. So we want that. So all we need to do put a hopper under that half slab. Now that seems like a really simple fix. The only problem comes is when sometimes they get caught up on that first water block. If they get caught up in this first water block I need a way for that to wash them over here. Let's see. It'll wash them over here, drop them there, and then put them into that stream that all the other zombies would have been. The zombies that would have dropped down into that first air block. This water block is going to carry that way, and then that way, and then they'll drop down through that. So I want a half slab that will carry them. And also I want to stop the water block, stop the water from flowing right there. So this water will flow that way and then drop them into that water source and then they'll be pushed up into the killing block. Let's let this go and see if this works. And that works just fine. So that leaves the baby pigment a one high block to fit through there, which is enough, but sometimes they can get clogged up a little bit there. So I'm going to replace that and make that a half slab. So they now have one and a half blocks to move around in, which is exactly the amount of space they have down here as well. And I know that's going to be enough for them. So let's seal them in. That should be sufficient. And that's how you make the double barreled B 
baby zombie cleanout system. Now it's time to light this candle. Save this step for last or you're gonna be getting yourself in a whole world of hurt. I'm gonna leave myself an exit and I'll close one of those trap doors so that'll act as a temporary bridge. And then as I'm backing out, I'll light each of these five portals. You're not gonna see all of them, but they are lit. And then seal us in. And then we are fully operational. And then the very last step would be to put that water curtain in front. And all that will be is one wall of blue glass with a space in between and then one more wall of blue glass and then just fill that in with water. And that's the automatic gold farm done and dusted. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, here's some more Minecraft videos for you to check out. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.